So if there was a nucleophile around, if the nucleophile, um, in some case, uh, the nucleophile will sometimes be fast enough to attack the number five, but we would also expect to get a lot of products where it attacks the number four. And in fact, maybe this would be the major product because tertiary is better than secondary. Um, okay, so that would be another example of uh, a uh, carbocation rearrangement. Um, where did this carbocation come from? Well, it's possible that it came from uh, maybe the leaving group just left. Well, basically, it came from a leaving group leaving. Um, and what's going to happen next? Well, when the leaving group leaves, remember that's the first step of an SN1 or an E1. So maybe the next thing is either an SN1 or an E1. So we can, this can also affect the E1 products that we can get as well. Once the carbocation rearranges, that will give us either uh, now, now a nucleophile can attack here, or maybe a base could take a beta hydrogen. Um, so that would give us a different product here as well. Um, and as the course goes on, you'll see many different examples of reactions uh, that produce carbocations. SN1 and E1 are not the only reactions that produce carbocations. Well, anytime you get a carbocation intermediate, there's the possibility of rearrangements. Although, again, usually you should only take that into account on a test question if there's a clue about that, um, that rearrangement. One um, result of this is when you're doing syntheses in the lab, chemists actually oftentimes try to avoid making carbocations. Because we just saw if you get a carbocation, you're going to get a mix of products. But if you're in the lab, you're usually trying to get a pure yield. You're trying to produce just one thing. So oftentimes, if there's a way to um, do a synthesis without carbocations, that's better because it avoids the carbocation rearrangements. OK, so we can look at one or two other examples here. Uh, but this was an example of an alkyl shift. All right. So we've got. All right, so the question is, um, suggest a structure for a more stable carbocation. A structure for a more stable carbocation. Um, so you'd also want to show a mechanism. So let's show a mechanism and uh, that would lead to a more stable carbocation. By the way, in this problem, that we're only allowed to do a single shift. Okay. A single shift that will give us a more stable carbocation. We need a single shift that will lead to a more stable carbocation. So, um, so I predict that it's going to it's going to take a hydrogen from the carbon that's closer to the pi bond. I think you're on the right track there. Why would that be better? How would that be an advantage? Because resonance is going to offer this stability. Huh? Okay. All right, you figured it out. That's a good answer. OK. Um, so see if you can draw the, uh, the mechanism there. But that, that's exactly what they're going for. Well, we could shift either of these two hydrogens. Uh, but if we shifted this hydrogen, that would put the positive charge here. And that would not be more stable. It would just be going from secondary to secondary. So these, this shift really would happen. This shift would happen. You can go from secondary to secondary, but it doesn't meet the, the requirements of the problem. The problem wanted a shift that would give us a more stable carbocation. So let's move this hydrogen over. OK. And then you came up with the right product. You had a little trouble, though, and maybe it would have been better then to have put in some numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. That just helps us to articulate what's going on a little bit more. And we can say to ourselves, well, there's no reason. We're still going to have the 1, 2 pi bond. So I'll put in the 1, 2 pi bond. And what's happening here is the hydrogen is moving from the 3 to the 4. The initial problem with your picture is that initially 
you put the positive charge here, and then you caught yourself. But it would have been easier to see that was a mistake with the numbering, because then you could say, who lost the electrons? The number three. The numbers allow you to be more specific about what, hap what changes are happening. The number three lost the electrons. So that's why, as you saw, this was a mistake. And we should put the positive charge of the number three over here. All right, now, most people would not see why this is more stable. They would say, well, what, what good is this? This is still secondary. Uh, but you were exactly right. It's stabilized by resonance. That's not something that you and I have talked about very much. Um, but like the second language book says, resonance becomes more and more and more important as the class goes on. And the big problem is most students will never think about resonance unless the problem includes the word resonance. But you've got to be looking for resonance, even if the problem didn't mention it. You've got to be on the lookout for resonance. Well, here there's resonance stabilization. That would give us this. That would put the positive charge over here. Um, by the way, I was just saying a second ago that you should never make a primary carbocation. Um, but I actually hinted that next term you would see some cases where there were primary carbocations. Well, I guess in your course, you're already seeing it here. It's OK to make a primary carbocation if it's stabilized by resonance. This is much more stable than a normal primary carbocation because it's stabilized by resonance. This will be much more important to you one or two terms later. But it looks like you're already seeing it in your textbook right now. So I have to adjust what I said before. You should never make a primary carbocation unless it's resonance stabilized. Um, resonance is actually even better than substitution for stabilizing things. I think this is even better than a secondary carbocation. Resonance is a very powerful way to stabilize charges. You can see how it's stabilized because notice there isn't really a full charge here. The charge is really, sp is really spread between the number one and the number three. There's only about half a charge here and half a charge here. So the, spread, the charge has been spread out and stabilized. Okay. Um, so this is another motive. So I said earlier that you would want to rearrange to uh, uh, a carbocation that has equal stability or more stability. Well, one way it can be more stabilized is, is if it's resonance stabilized. OK. Um, should we do another example from that set or move on to something else? OK. Like I said, as far as just doing test problems is concerned, um, you're probably not expected to actually use carbocation rearrangements unless there's a, a strong clue in the problem that that's what it's about. <laughs>